extend those tax cuts. Yeah, we had had our uh, official tax clock uh, countdown blow up just moments ago because, in effect, we have another clock which shows two years in counting because we're going to go through this whole debate once again so, in two years, so we have 14 days, now? seven hours, 33 minutes, and 20 <laughs> seconds. This one, I thought we were done with the other. Now we got to look at the two-year. All right, so we are on it for you. Here's the question, though. The next Congress isn't even seated yet. But perhaps it's the Tea Party that may be able to claim a big victory now that the Senate has dumped the $1.27 billion pork-filled spending bill. So we're moving from the tax extension to the spending bill. So are we seeing Tea Party economics taking hold in D.C.? Let's ask Senator Saxby Chambliss, who was very kind to stay with us through the break, Republican of Georgia. Senator, this pork bill almost became law because there were nine Republicans who were willing to take some pork of their own that were offered by the Democrats putting this bill together, uh, and they were going ahead with it. Susan Collins, uh, uh, Bob Bennett, who's leaving the Senate, and a host of other people, including uh, uh, Lisa Murkowski from Alaska. Senator Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Senate Republicans, called these people up, called them to the carpet, said, you don't go down that route. He pulled them away. So this thing almost made it. Do you think that's, that Senator Mitch McConnell will be able to stay tough, use that Tea Party spirit throughout the next Congress? I think without question, Dave, uh, you know, I'm very proud of my colleagues who literally changed their mind on this bill, and that's what caused Harry Reid to have to pull it down. You know, this bill is, is, it represents everything that have made people mad about what's going on in D.C. And the people across America spoke loud and clear on November the 2nd. Uh, they don't like this excessive spending. They don't like these 2,000-page bills. They, they don't like um, uh, things jammed in at the last minute. And they don't like earmarks. And all of that was included in this bill. And I think it's very significant. It was not just Tea Partiers, but the American people, whether they were Tea Partiers, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, all spoke loud and clear. And I can assure you, every telephone in every office building in Washington was ringing constantly from people all across the country about this. And, and uh, thank goodness Congress responded to people in a positive way. Senator, it's almost been such a fasc fascinating process to watch because I think you're right. I think that... People on both sides of the aisle realized, wow, in this day and age when you have, I mean, outlets like Fox Business, we were holding people's feet to the fire on both sides of the aisle. We had Senator Wicker of Georgia who said, oh, I'm not going to vote for this. And then we found out that there were millions of dollars in pork for his state, Mississippi rather, that he had put through. And, and I believe you're absolutely right. So what happens next? Does this have a long tail? Will it continue? Will Congress get the message that the spending really has to stop? Well, I think you'll remember that after the election, when the Senate came back for a, an organizational session, that Republicans in the Senate voted unanimously to eliminate the earmarking process. And that's what really generated a lot of enthusiasm across the country. And then you come back with a spending bill that's got all these earmarks in it. So right. that's why I'm very pleased that my colleagues came together last night and did the right thing. As we move forward to next year, uh, you better believe things are going to change. We've got a new group over on the House side that have made a real commitment to a reduction in spending and getting our financial house in order. That's translated over into our, not just our new folks in the House, but now, as you can see from this vote last night, those of us who are returning have that same uh, invigorated spirit about making sure that we reduce spending, we provide meaningful tax reform, and move to get our physical house truly, truly back in order. What did Mitch McConnell say to these Republicans, to, to Thad Cochran, to Bob Bennett, Susan Collins, Kit Bond, George Voinovich, who were getting their pork, were going to go along with the Democrats until McConnell called them? What did he tell them that convinced them to pull their support for this bill? Well, of course, I was not in the room when the conversations took place, but um, to his credit, Bob Bennett made the statement today in front of a large group of us that, look, uh, I was not going to let Leader McConnell go down this road, and therefore I made a decision to change my mind. Bob Bennett's to be commended for that. He didn't, he didn't have to do that, and I'm sure all the rest of them felt likewise. What next now? What are you keeping your sights upon, sir? What do you think is going to be 
uh, something that's very important to look forward to. I mean, we've obviously got the health care issue where at least one state has had a, a positive ruling, at least for the one side of perhaps overturning or deciding that this might be unconstitutional. Does health care really become a focus? Well, I think it's got to, Liz, because health care is driving this economy right now, and particularly with respect to the uh, rise in spending, uh, not just by Congress, uh, where, where we have any number of health care programs that are out of control, Medicare, Medicaid, and otherwise. But you look at any company in America and ask them what their number one issue is from a spending standpoint and a bottom line standpoint, and they'll tell you the rising cost of health care. You know, the, the president's uh, deficit commission that just came back and reported the first of this month made some very interesting proposals, but the one thing they really didn't go after was the health care issue. We've got to tackle that, and if we're truly going to get serious about getting the debt of this country under control, we've got to look at the mandatory side as well as the discretionary side because mandatory, the mandatory side is two-thirds of the spending. That includes Social Security and Medicare, and I think there will be a renewed commitment once we get back here and our new members are sworn in on January the 5th next year to put all of these items on the table and let's get serious about what we have to do in a meaningful way right. to make real reforms in these programs. Well, you say a renewed commitment. I've never seen that commitment inside Congress. That's the third rail. Usually politicians run away from any kind of commitment like that. So let's see if it happens. Senator Saxby Jamblis of, Gord of Georgia, good to see you, sir. Thanks for coming in. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Merry Senator. Christmas. Labor leaders at the White House, that's next.